So we've been talking a lot about how uh, how the city is divided and. and got into some very you know specific ways that that, that uh, manifested itself uh, under the last mayor Adrian Fenty and but let's let's look forward a little bit um, what what does uh, you know uh, mayor, mayor mayor elect Gray's uh, slogan is one city I'm curious what exactly that means to you all and, and what what are we going to see in our neighborhoods in on you know on the street um, what in the best case scenario um, what, what could change and I'll throw that to you first then Donnie I've looked at Gray's leadership as council chair, and he seems like a very diplomatic individual. And I, I do think that he will be all-inclusive. I don't think that he will intend to alienate anyone. However, I go back down this two-way street that I often go down <laughs> because it's not really up to Gray what happens. It's really up to the Washington, D.C. community to decide their own destiny. And once Gray, get, Gray gets in office, there, there are people who are threatened by the future of D.C., um, but they're not threatened of the leadership, you know. They just have to make sure that they put themselves in the position to be able to reap the benefits of what all the city's going to have to offer in the future. D.C. is on track to become a world-class city with the amenities, with the, the base of people. Uh, who are coming, the institutions that are coming. It's on track to be a world class. The waterfront development, uh, it's coming. And you're going to have to be able to be able to pay to play in a lot of respects or have some type of, uh, uh, of position in which you are able to be included in all that's going on. And you got to get, get yourself in that position. So, Jonathan, what, what, is, uh, what does this inclusiveness mean? Does this mean hours and hours of public meetings and then we sort of make the same decisions? Or, uh, you know, I guess that's a cynical way of looking at it, but how, how do you view it? Well, I think, I, I think Vincent Gray is a very diplomatic person. I think he'll make a big difference just by, you know, even if he decides he doesn't agree with whatever you're saying, listening to you, having, letting you feel like um, your input was, was being um, considered, and you know, and then I think a lot of people will not feel so alienated by their by their city's government. Um, you know, the, the tough thing for him is he's coming in with a hundred and seventy-five million dollar budget shortfall, yeah, and was, probably four hundred over the next up. few years. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a really really tough. Somebody's going to be angry at the end of the I day. I mean, right? that it's that's going to everybody's going to have to give up something. It's going to it is going to be ugly. Um, so that you know, it's it's very tough to figure out how he will make. Um, you know, make some accomplishments or accomplish some things when he has to deal with such cuts right away. And, and on that note, you got to remember Vince Gray, he kind of championed cutting the earmarks, yeah. which funded a lot of the grassroots organizations. And this time we'll have Especially to see. Especially in the arts, right? Yeah, and a lot of the school money also under Finney administration got taken out to put in the general funds as well. So we got to look in the budget and we see what Gray is going to do when we see his budget, you know? Is, is he going to um, take from some of the more grassroots community-oriented uh, supports and services to empower some more of the economic development? Or who knows? You can mix and match in a million mm -hmm. ways. So we're not, we're not really, uh, one, one city might be nice for, for campaign slogans, but <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta you got to make a budget and somebody's going to lose and somebody's right. going to win. One That's city right. a lot leaner. Than <laughs> you know, one city <laughs> united in having their services cut or whatever it is, yeah. 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 I think in a bigger picture kind of way, one of his biggest challenges will be that this is a city that operated in a very black-white kind of um, way and that they were seen as being two communities. I think that um, Latinos, uh, Asian Americans, African immigrants, uh, Muslim Americans uh, are becoming a bigger and bigger part of the city and a bigger voice. And he's going to have to find a way to include them. He's going to have to find a way to have people in leadership who represent these communities and, and look out for their needs. So when we talk about, when we were talking about um, empowering the people who live in DC to try to have some control over their future when the, you know, the, the city is changing, you know, if one thing that Vincent Gray could, if he could make some progress in getting the city's population trained and prepared for full-time work, um, even if it's not a job that requires a college degree or even a high school degree in some cases, but ready for something and get, if this community college that the University of District of Columbia is, is starting, if that really becomes a kind of a reliable organization, that's a big pro well, problem we've had for generations in the city. So if they can, if we can get some of those skills up to get those people working in our hotels, working in our hospitals, working in our universities, 
That, I mean, if, even if he makes a dent in that in four years, I think that would be a, a really big accomplishment for the city. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about removing the um, application questions about are you a felon and mm -hmm. you know Thanks these offenders. kind yeah. of things and trying to trying to level out the playing field. And a these are bit. plausible changes, you think? And these are things that are, are going to be some good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's they, a bill out there right they, now. They, they're going to be some good efforts on behalf of the city that I think that the city always makes good. I think that a leader will always give his constituency the benefit of doubt when they don't have the leverage. However, will his constituency take advantage? Will they play their part?